Yep. All right, guys, we are joined by Brooke Steard, Rena Reyes, and Gianna Paul. And so we'll open it up for questions. All right, Mason? Ladies, you're in the final four. How do you feel? It's fantastic. <laughs> oh, Indescribable. I mean, you're literally <laughs> crying after the game. It just hits the you so hard. The whistle blew, and you're just like, wait, what's going hysterical. on right now? This is awesome. <laughs> and this is my senior year, so it's just like, it, this is like the way to go out, you know? On opposite sides of that, like, she's a freshman. Like, it's just kind of crazy coming in and doing that, too. Literally every single goal that I mentally had for this season, we have checked off, so I don't know. It's incredible. Just it's national unreal. championship next. <laughs> <laughs> That's the next one. Brooke, can you talk about the defense tonight? You know Duke has the ability to really hurt teams on offense, but the defense was good throughout the night for you guys. Can you talk about just what went into really stalling them for not just 90 minutes, but also the overtime period? I think um, we knew that they had a lot of threats coming in because they are competing with Riley Mattingly, who's got some of the most goals in the country. Um, we knew that we had to communicate and make sure that we always had man on their two really, really good forwards and stuff, but I feel like we communicated basically the whole night, and our whole back line is just absolutely insane, so just appreciate them and everything that they did, too. What was it like taking a two-goal lead? You know, what's that mentally like when you, you see it coming so close? I think... I, oh, no, so, you can go. <laughs> Oh, I was going to say, like, it does take a little bit of pressure off. Obviously, like, we don't want to, like, let up... Um, like on anything, but it does take a little pressure off. A two goal lead, I mean, at least from my standpoint, is like one of the most dangerous leads you can have because as soon as they get that second, yeah. that first one, the momentum changes and it gets like a little overwhelming. But I think as we came back in overtime, we were able to like manage that. And then when Raina scored the game winner, <laughs> we just held that for the rest of that. But a two goal lead is like, I don't know. It's yeah. like, especially with them, we knew that like something can happen because that's how they've been the whole season is just making things happen. So we knew that it wasn't safe from then, but we were obviously excited, but things happen, you know? Exactly. Great. Ashley, the microphone. Uh, Gianna, just to be the one to kind of break through with that first goal when you guys had so many opportunities, just how does it feel to kind of get that goal in? Oh so my gosh. It was, I don't know, that's like my first like big time kind of goal in the tournament. Like I had the one versus Jackson State, but we already had like seven before that. So I was just like, I wanted one that like kind of like meant something um, and then I missed the breakaway at the beginning of the game and that was like it kind of like gets in your head a little bit but like I just locked in and I finally got that one and I don't know it's just it's an unreal feeling I can't even express how much it means to me. Y'all generated 15 corner kicks. Uh, can, you, can you just tell me about kind of what went into your offensive production, especially against a team with such a strong defense like Duke? Um, we knew that they like to play out of the back and that they like to use the goalie with her feet, and that is what we love to press. Like, we love to press. We high press. We've done it all season. It's been successful. And as soon as Wes was like, high press them, that's exactly what yeah. we did. And got corners. We knew Duke likes to play beautiful soccer, and we just wanted to make them uncomfortable and press them. We also have like Jess right now on the outside who just Love pound the corner. outside over and over again so corners are easy to come by with us. <laughs> Raina, please take us through your game winner and not only the emotions but also the moments that led up to it. Yes, um, so I will try to describe it the best I can. I really <laughs> blanked because it was just, I can't even believe it, but I just remember a cross being in and then it just being bubble up in the air and I saw Riley Mattingly on it and I was just hoping that it would just pop out where I needed it to and it did and I was like oh my gosh and I just went for it and in that moment I just blinked but I just knew what I had to do and it just happened but it was indescribable. You and Duke combined for 38,006 yellow cards. <laughs> <laughs> um, just talk about the physicality of the game for 90 minutes plus think, overtime. I mean I think it's just like an emotional game like we have so much on the line to get to the final four is a crazy feat for a season and so both teams are going to be on edge and like doing things like that and you just want the ball and you want everything you can out of the game, so fouls come with that, I think. Exactly. Did, did you feel like you were pressing a little bit early when the game finally kind of broke up? You had some really good opportunities. When we have those initial opportunities, um, we can feel it coming. Like, we always know the goal is going to come. Like, we'll say to each other, we're like, it's coming, it's coming. It's coming, man. It's, it's, it's like one of the things we kind of like connect on, like when we're speaking, like if someone misses a shot and it's like really close, we're like, it's coming. Yeah. So we literally just keep jamming it down and then eventually the goal comes. Yeah, just keep encouraging our players, like take take risks, take on that player. Like nobody's gonna be mad at you if you take a shot. And I feel like that confidence that we give each other like, lays the foundation. So.
The season that y'all have been having has led to this question a lot, but with the last home game tonight, can you talk about the turnout and the support that you had? It's incredible. I mean, to have everyone there just rooting you on and like, especially just having them all around the field and stuff, you just can feel like this town's a football town, we know that. And like to have some of that just be right there with you and like cheering you on and making sure that they know that like we're here, we're here and like ready to do what we need to do to win these games. As a freshman in club soccer, no one comes to games. It's like parents. <laughs> and then high school soccer, it's all parents. So I came here and I, I don't know what I was expecting, but it wasn't like thousands of people yeah. <laughs> to show up and support us. But it's just, you can feel the energy. Every time you make a strong tackle, every time you take a great shot, every time Mac makes an incredible save, you feel the energy and it just pushes you to keep going. So I couldn't ask for more. And then the difference from our fans my freshman year to now, it's insane. So <laughs> it's nice to see the change. <laughs> How did those fans kind of help y'all keep your head in the game when it when it switched from regular time to overtime? It's the first time you've entered overtime since October 2021. I feel like we, we just like, we know that they believe in us and like every time that we make a big tackle or tackle or like a great run or shot, they give us that, like, we just feed off their energy, like, their cheers and everything, and, like, we just, we just want to, you know, obviously we play for each other, we, we play for ourselves, but we play for our fans, like, and so I just yeah, think. So have energy, but yeah. they just give us that extra bit when we get that huge tackle or something, and it's just, it feels crazy. It feels even crazier than it does on the field. Can I go finish with Mason? Both goals that do score were questionable in terms of if the Michelle was offsides, just either random, or, or just tell me through what you saw at home. I mean, the call's a call, it happened. I think we move on and we got the win, so it doesn't really matter now. Yeah, I mean, just like in the defending standpoint, like, we just thought that they were offsides, but in the end of the day, it doesn't matter. We just, it's what we do after. Call's a call. Yeah. Hey, thanks, ladies. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you.